Broadcom acquired VMware and put a significant price change in place which is really making people decide if they're going to stick with VMware. It's left people, I think, almost cornered in what to do going forward. When it comes to alternatives to VMware, which ones are actually realistic for any company to use? For me, we're still looking at kind of the big three players in terms of we've got Hyper-V, obviously by Microsoft, which is tried and tested. Um, we've got VMware, which is still, you know, for some people, they won't have an option to move off it. And thirdly, I'd say Zen Server, depending on what workload you're running um, on there. Regardless of the the cost implications that come in with VMware, like what are the pros and cons? Yeah, I think for me, it is the standout product. I think if cost isn't an option and you want to run a hypervisor in your own data center on-premise, I think, you know, it's a proven, it's got a proven track record. There's multiple products out there which integrate, integrate directly into it. You know, it's a, it's a stable platform. And I think most people who work in IT have seen it before, used it. Um, I think things like the support, the performance of it, um, I think it's kind of second to none. I think it, it is a standout product. I think that's probably why it's, I think, rubs a lot of people up the wrong way. I think if you didn't, people didn't like the product, they wouldn't be so passionate about what's happened. I think, yeah, it's definitely rubbed up people the wrong way. Yeah, it's like a breakup. Yeah, I think say with VMware, you know, there's, you know, they've got integrations from SAM providers. Um, you know, we've got Veeam, which integrates directly into it. We've got products like Zerto for replication. And kind of a lot of these other businesses that would have built their business around VMware as a product. Mm. So I think for them, you know, they've gone from a huge market to sell the product to, to now a vastly, a vastly reducing one. I think the truth is, I think if you ask most people, I'd say unless you're looking to move to public cloud, there's not really anyone that would say, let's move hypervisors from VMware. You know, if cost isn't an option, I think it is, it's the standout product for people. I think that's the only thing that will drive people away from it. It's kind of got a proven track record, you know, and it will disturb your business moving away from it. It's going to cause downtime and there's going to be teething issues with the new hypervisors. So I guess the the big alternative to VMware is probably Hyper-V. Um, what, what are the pros and cons involved with Hyper-V? I'm a fan of Hyper-V in terms of, I think it's got its purpose. I think it's it works well for people. If I'd say got a smaller estate, they're not, you know, an MSP trying to host multiple clients in clusters in there. I think it's the comfort factor. It's based on Windows. People understand Windows. Um you know, there's obviously um, third-party products that work with it. Microsoft got a lot of kind of history working on it. You know, there's built-in backup products. There's DR products that support it. I think set installing it's one thing, but I think setting it up is another thing in terms of kind of integrating with, you know, something like your SAN, backup products, etc. cetera. Um, so it's good products. You know, they do do a free product in terms of Hyper-V is free. But as soon as you want to start running Windows VMs, you know, you need to start looking at the cost of it then. You know, obviously the alternative, the best method is to get a data center license that allows you to install unlimited servers. So you could have 10 Windows servers, you're just paying for your data center license. If you're running something like standard edition, that gives you two VMs. So again, the costs can then start building up in there. Um, but no, so I'd, I'd put it up there as... As one of my products, I think I'd look at going to. But then kind of looking forward where Microsoft are pushing things at the moment, obviously developing cloud a lot. Um, I can't see the price increases coming into it, but it's how much development there is kind of kind of going forward with it. Zen Server, is that a decent alternative option? I think it's great if you're running um, desktops and virtual desktops. So Zen Desktop, Windows 10, 11, 2022 multi-session servers. That's kind of our experience in doing it. But I think in terms of products, it's kind of an afterthought in terms of DR, backup products. And I think it, it's quite, it's easy to install, but to install correctly and get it to function the same way as VMware, there's kind of a lot of add-ons to, to get it to that level. I think for some clients that have got Citrix premium licensing and they're getting it for free, it could be an alternative, but 
I think I was speaking to one of my colleagues and almost saying that if you got a job at a new company, started there, there was something like Zen Server and something went wrong with it and the previous guy had put in this product and kind of you're left with it. I think it's a hard product to support. You know, you can get support with Citrix, but in terms of the SLA compared to someone like VMware and the level of skill set to look after it, I just don't see it's a viable option. I couldn't see any big players moving to it. Um, in the past, a lot of people used it for the desktops purely because of the licensing costs. So it saves you a lot of licenses in VMware um, and the kind of dumb machines in terms of, you know, they spin up, shut down, they move around, but kind of things like uh, something like DRS, which is in VMware, which can actually move machines around, depend on um, the host usage, kind of Zen server c- can do it, but you need another third party server running on it to control it. So it's kind of all these add-on pieces, which makes it more and more complicated. And I think it's kind of narrowing the pool of people who could look after it. So Zen server, your budget option? Budget option as a short-term option. Yeah. Um, until you can move off it. Okay, so in terms of like non-hypervisor alternatives, sort of more on the public cloud side, what would the pathway look like from VMware to a public cloud? I guess probably the first question to ask would be, what's what's the best public clouds to to move to from VMware? You know, yeah, yeah. It's obviously the big two players. We've got Azure and kind of AWS. I kind of think for me, Azure in terms of I think a lot of people have got the core Microsoft skills kind of in the pocket already so it's it's not almost a scary thing they're probably kind of integrated already they're probably using things like intune sharepoint 365 so they're already in the azure ecosystem so for me i think it's an easy easier step for people i think with public cloud as well it is expensive you're just looking at doing a lift and shift of what you've got at the moment that's kind of not the purpose of public cloud it's kind of looking at modernizing what you've got if you've got vmware at the moment you've got data center licensing You can obviously be spinning up multiple virtual machines on there. You're already paying for the license. But in terms of if you're running on Azure, you're kind of paying a per VM cost. So that's in terms of the compute, the hardware, the license on it. So really, if you're running unnecessary servers, legacy systems, it's kind of having an overarching view of what they're doing now. Can we rationalize them down before looking at moving them to cloud? Uh, Or could we look at things like PaaS, moving our SQL servers, to manage services within Azure, because yeah, otherwise it, c- it can get expensive. If you are looking at moving to a hypervisor, like we mentioned, you may need to buy some additional hardware, you need some servers, firewall. And we're kind of looking at public cloud, kind of that infrastructure is there already. It's provided by Microsoft and AWS. So really, it's just kind of a paid month, pay as you go model in terms of you pay monthly for what you consume. So I think straight away. You know, for some companies, it's probably a better offer in terms of in terms of paying out. And obviously, VMware they're looking at people committing for three years. Obviously, Microsoft, you're kind of just paying by the minute that it's on. You can look at doing commits, so we can put things like reservations in place to lower costs of compute and storage, which is a great alternative to bring the cost down. So, VMware is costing me a lot of money. Potentially, you've got three years, haven't you? Three years of your new contract until. To, to make the plan to move away. That's it. But I think for people as well, it's looking at their hardware life cycle. Have some, have some people got a year left on their servers running on-prem and they've got to tie into another agreement with VMware. It's, yeah, a lot of it comes down to timing. Is it almost giving people the kick to look at public cloud as an option? Like, you know, there is people who have been sweating the hardware, haven't they? Kind of coasting along, looking at, Next year, we'll start looking at Azure. Is the it the year motivation? After. Yeah. And obviously people, you know, especially internal IT departments, they're busy, aren't they? They've got internal projects. And as long as that's running over there, they're kind of happy and they can get on with the other stuff. But it's kind of brought that to the foreground now that people need to start, you know, kind of accelerating their journey to cloud. Yep. And is now the right time? Probably for some people. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are using it more reliable it's safer i think there's not the fear around it anymore is there, in terms of you know where's my data going yeah. and you, you know and microsoft will increase prices as well yeah naturally but i don't think you can ever see a jump that we've seen with vmware yeah, i think you're right about people being more comfortable about cloud all your photos are backed up on the cloud now just on your phone it's just more of a 
publicly known, like understood product. Yeah. Um, so companies more more possibly happier to to lean into that. Yeah, I think now it's it's not something that just IT nerds know about. I think you know we saw CrowdStrike. That was headlines, BBC News. That's you know people are more more aware of kind of technology and how it's affecting the day to day life. Yeah, I think obviously since you know COVID, people working at home. I think people expect more from technology now. You know, higher up times. Yeah. You know, it, it's difficult. So a ninety nine point nine 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 uptime, kind of hosting on premise or in your data center, it's a big ask really. So I say moving to something like Microsoft Azure or AWS, you know, it's more attainable to get something like that without the initial cost of, to get to something like that, it's kind of M plus one on everything you've got. Kind of Microsoft, AWS, they're doing all the hard work for you, putting it all there. There is a cost with it, but yeah, it's kind of allowing your business to operate. I think, say, people want people are working 24-7 now, aren't they? I think what we've seen in IT, it's not just patching from nine o'clock at night, you know, some people are like two, three in the morning. They've got people working till. Makes everything a bit more difficult, I think. Exactly, yeah. Thanks for watching Experts in Polo Shirt. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. <laughs>